And yes, I'm back. I've had a lot of people saying, please continue this, please. Uh, and don't worry, I, I trust me, I, I enjoy this type of what if, so I'm not going anywhere anytime soon. Welcome back to part three of What If Hinata were on Team 7. Last time on Naruto What If, the Team 7 had just encountered Zabuza, began their training, and now we're back to the main story plot, where Zabuza emerged on the bridge. Now, I'm probably going to piss off a lot of you guys doing this. But I'm going to be flat out honest with you, because this is the way I roll. The way I do a what if is I look at the scenario, I'll take the change that happens within the story, and see how it alters the future of the story. Hinata being on Team 7 really doesn't change this entire outcome at all. And here's why. Hinata is essentially the replacement for Sakura. Now, she is far more confident than Sakura is, just because she actually has ability and she knows she's actually trying to improve herself, all that. And we've seen a little bits of that happening so far. Their teamwork is a little better. I'd say Naruto and Sasuke, thanks to like sparring with Hinata, uh, are a little bit better in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Hinata's probably been practicing with her Byakugan. Her confidence has gone up a little bit. But more than anything, she's been playing a role where she defends the client. And that is where she's going to be. She's going to be defending the client. She's going to be where Sakura is this mo uh, most of the time in this scenario, particularly on the bridge bell. And it makes sense for her to be the one who's protecting him, uh, uh, honestly, because she's the one with the Byakugan who can, you know, scan as far as possible. Now, obviously, the mist does make that difficult, specifically because Kakashi even states that it's a thicker, more denser mist, and he, even Hinata's going to have difficulty seeing through it. That being said, she still can see a certain radius, and she's use, she'll use that as a way to keep uh, the clients safe. Now, you may ask, why did she go fight Haku? Well, Sasuke's fighting Haku, and then Naruto goes in the fight Haku. Why did she go and help Naruto? Because, now, that's a fair question, and she might even consider doing it, but Kakashi would very much tell her, Hinata, have faith in your teammates. And say, Naruto and Sasuke aren't, uh, haven't been training for nothing either. They're... They're capable of handling this, but you have to have faith. Uh, and if you go, then Taza is unprotected. Like, and, you know, Pina's like, mm, no, right. I got, I got to, this is what Naruto would do. And, you know, I got to, look, it, go to Naruto's, you know, kind of uh, ways of inspiration. To be fair, Naruto would also go and, you know, help her friends need it. But Naruto also wants to be a great ninja. So she's, you know, has to, you know, keep to the plan. Other than that, nothing really changes. The fight goes exactly the same with Sasuke, Kakashi, and Naruto and Haku. So that fight goes the same, including the fact where Naruto, you know, goes to QB mode. Now, when Naruto goes into this QB mode, if you will, basically his, uh, it's not even a QB mode. It's just when he channels some of the Fox Chakra, everyone picks up on it. And Hinata even is able to pick up on it to a much better degree because she can actually see Chakra. Granted, the fog makes the mist makes that difficult, uh, but she can still the amount of chakra going out there is staggering. So she can kind of see, is like, is that Naruto Khan? What's what's going on with his chakra? Because she doesn't know, as far as we know, she didn't know about the nine tail fog. She could probably see the chakra just like Neji did, but even Neji, looking at Naruto's chakra, seeing what was going on in the fight, didn't know he had the fox in him. Um, so that said, Naruto beats the living crap out of it. Haku. Uh, Haku goes to save Kakashi, and eventually the mist clears. Hinata does, uh, you know, sees Naruto, like, Naruto, you're okay! Where's Sasuke? And then Sasuke, and then Naruto, gets, and he kind of looks at him, and then Hinata just receives that look, he's like, Naruto, what's wrong? And then she sees Sasuke, he's like, oh no! And then she goes over, and, you know, she's using her Byakugan, and trying to do the best she can to, you know, examine him, see if she, he, she can help. Now, here's the thing, we know that Sasuke wasn't dead, he was in a death-like state. Uh, a temporary death state, if you will. So, is it possible that Hinata could pick up on the fact that he's alive? <sighs> Maybe, but I don't think her skills... See, like, we, I pointed out in the last video, because some people were pointing out in the comments, that um, Hinata is better at, like, di long distance than precision. So, something like figuring out if someone's alive with the Biak gun might be a little much for her skills at this time. But she still goes there, and she's, you know, she's upset. Now, that's not like he's Sakura just mourning. He's like, ah! she's not weeping or anything. But she's just like, no. And but she's, you know, she's upset. It's like this is this is her teammate. This is someone she even might even consider a friend. Uh, and he's apparently dead in her. So she's kind of like cradling his head there, and just, you know, it's like, mm, and she's just like, mm, 
she's trying to hold back the tears, and even Naruto's just looking at her, and you can see her mourning. And when he, and something about watching Hinata cries really, really hurts Naruto. Like he saw, like when he when when he heard Sakura crying, he's like holding his heart, just. Ugh. But he he sees Hinata there, and he kind of goes. He, he, something about Hinata crying just it's almost it's too much for him to. He goes over there, and he. Um, you know, puts his hand on her shoulder and she just, and she flinches and just, and she starts to break, not break down like Sakura did, but she's, she is shedding tears for her fallen kind. And she kind of just holds Naruto's hand there. Naruto has this weird feeling like, oh, this is weird. I mean, it's nice that he has his hands very soft and it's like, wait, what am I thinking? This is my teammate. Holy crap. The inklings of the beginning of a crush start to, you know, happen. Uh, but yeah, you know, but. Obviously, different circumstance. Obviously, it's like, oh, wow, her hand's so soft, I'm in love. Their, their friend is theoretically dead in front of you. Clearly, say it for another time. But still, he does, his mind does kind of go to that. And, you know, uh, still, ultimately, they have to deal with Gacho. And that all goes down the exact same. Um, with the exception that Hinata lays, gently lays uh, Sasuke's head down, and she's also, you know, steps up with Naruto and Kakashi, and she's raging, right, like, oh, she, like, she's the Avenger fallen friend, and this scumbag, there is no hesitation, there's just fire and fury in her eyes, like, hell hath not been, or hell hath no fury. Uh, so she's like, mm, it's like, you know, ready to go, and then all of a sudden, you know, Sasuke's waking up, and, you know, obviously the, the villagers come in, scare everyone, Sasuke wakes up, she's like, uh, and you know, and as Naruto and Hinata both go over to their phone, kind of he they can see him all of a sudden. Stern's like, "What happened, uh, Sasuke? You're okay, Sasuke?" And then he's like, "What? Where am I? Ah, why do I feel like a pin cushion? Oh God!" Uh, and he's like, "Oh, that that's probably because you got a bunch of you know, Semba stuck in you." It's like, "What happened?" And then you know, while he was fighting, his heart was breaking in two, and that whole shtick. Other than that, the little changes I did there, and just, you know, replaying the whole thing, nothing really changes, unfortunately, here. So, obviously, Zabza and Haku get buried. They name it the Great Naruto Bridge. Um, now, he not, you don't end it with, you know, Sasuke, you want to do something? I'll do something with you, Sakura. That was a private conversation. No, it wasn't, you bitch. Shut up. Um, you were in earshot of your entire team. Shut the fuck up. Uh, God, I hate I t I grew, I was at least tolerant, um, tolerant to even... Liking a kid in a couple chapters, Sakura in Shippuden, and then she got annoying again. But in the first series, oh god, Sasuke, Sakura is so bad. Uh, she's such a bad. Not that she's bad. Here's that weird thing. I'm gonna go on a, like uh, what, what time? Okay, I'm gonna go on a brief like thirty to one minute, the second to one minute tangent here. Sakura isn't technically badly, isn't badly written technically. She is written well for the type of character she is, and realizing her faults later down the line helps her grow into a better character in Shippuden. But the problem is, the growth we got with her, which pretty much was up to Sasori, was stripped away once we really got into the um, Sasuke retrieval stuff. It was just and then just kind of declined after that. Quickly, lying around to saying, I love you. And then, what, were you actually going to just date him out of, you know, and then, you know, eventually get married and have, be in a loveless marriage with a guy, you, you know, friends? Like, God, we were not thinking this through at all. Okay, tangent over. So, we cut back to the village. Now, here's something that I don't know. I don't understand why the third didn't do this. Uh, now, obviously, maybe it's because they couldn't afford it, the, uh, the land of the ways, but eventually they would have worked out something. But Kakashi even said, this is, this, we're beyond the scale of this mission. This is no longer a C-rank mission. Why didn't the third upgrade the mission ranking? Like, in the bingo book, why didn't they say that they were actually on a B or A rank mission? Well, in here, no. Then once they get back reports, it's like, uh, this, this mission will be graded as a, as an A-rank mission. You will be paid accordingly once uh, pro once uh, we get a proper a proper uh, payment schedule plan from the Land of the Waves. It's like, woo! Take a break. So, there you go. Uh, they all go off and do their own thing. You know, they say goodbye. Naruto actually makes a point, too, of looking at it and saying, I'll see, we'll see you at a training tomorrow, Hinata. It's like, mm, bye! And he actually does take a moment to actually linger as she's, you know, walking away. It's like, Hmm. It's like, <laughs> it's like, you know, she's got pretty hair. Where did that come from? 
Hinata goes home, and yeah, she he she's uh, she asks one of the servants, "Where's his father?" He's like, "He's in the dojo training Hinata." It's like, "Very well." And then she's not looking forward to this because she already knows her feelings that her father has towards her and her sister versus her. Uh, she thinks he, he thinks that Hinata is worth far more than uh, Hinata is, um, and he's a dick for it. But you know, she got she as uh, you know, I was like, "Enter," and it's like, "Hinata, you're home. I see." Is uh, um, Hinabi, take fi take a five minute break. Uh, uh or take uh, take well, or not a five minute. Break. Hinabi, take a few moments to rest. I, I would wish to hear or wish for Hinata to report what uh, what the mission was like. So she regales uh, regales a mission starting small uh, starting from the beginning, and then and he and she even catches a couple of times where he even goes. Wait, Zaba Zaba, and he even stops saying, Zaba Zaba Mochi, one of, a former member of the Seven Swordsmen, Zaba Zaba Mochi. It's like, yes, father. And then he just kind of continue. And she's even like, okay. Um, and she explains this, and then she explains the ice user. He's like, a member of the Yuki clan was alive? It's like, <laughs> and this is in his head. I mean, apart from the surprise, legitimate surprise look about fighting Zaba Zaba, someone he'd probably even have problems with. Um, you know, he, she, he hears out the entire story and he's kind of just thinking a little bit, just like, um, it, should I go? Um, and she's like, just not sure what to do. She's, the science is getting awkward. She's like, hmm, very, very well. You may go. Do your best not to keep, in, uh, do, keep, uh, keep doing uh, whatever it is you're doing, Hinata. Continue, continue it. And she, she just kind of blanks from him and like, did that was a legitimate compliment. Obviously, this is in her head. Like, uh, yes, father. And she, again, being Hugo, you got good perception. She vaguely makes out the, like, most, his face, she's known, it. she can read his, probably his facial features since she was a young girl being tortured by him. Uh, but she can clearly see, like, there's some level of, admiration, happy pride, honestly. It's very minute, but hearing that she's made this kind of a confidence seems to have had a positive effect. And she wants to keep having that positive effect. So she, you know, actually stands up a little taller, a bit more, uh, you know, a bit more confidence there. And she goes, yes. And he even knows that she's holding herself a little bit better and more, a bit more spine to her back, if you will. And, you know, she leaves the door, and he's wondering, continue, Hinabi, let us continue. And she, and he's like, yes, father. And meanwhile, I was thinking, I wonder what it could, I wonder what uh, Kakashi's doing to give her, to cause such improvement in her. Hmm. And so, that's the end of that. Now, we cut now to basically the tuning exams are going to be starting. They get the day off, obviously. Now, you don't get the Sakura, the first off, we won't meet Sakura and the gang until later in the tuning exams, because that didn't happen in this. <clears throat> Uh, but you don't get Sasuke, uh, like, you don't get Hina, guys, get Sasuke for a date or anything. You're even worse than her. No, you don't get that. Sasuke just goes off on his own train. It's like, all right, whatever, take, take it easy. Uh, and so Hinata actually just asks, actually works up the courage, just saying, you know, do, would you maybe like to get something to eat or something? And so maybe hang out for a little bit. Like, oh, that sounds like funny, Hinata, sure. And all of a sudden, as they're walking, they see the square rock. And even Hinata is like, is that supposed to be camouflage? Uh, I'll be honest, Hinata, I'm not sure. That's pretty lame, though. <laughs> I guess you used too much gunpowder. Um, and then, oh, and, and Hinabi, or, or Hinabi, uh, Konohamaru, what are you doing? It's like, oh, you promised you'd play ninja with us today. Oh, uh, I mean, that's right. Uh, I suppose I did promise you. It's like, and Hinata's even like, oh, you, you're going to play ninja with us. Like, hey, I mean, come on, Hinata, you can play with us, too. Remember when we used to do that as kids? It's like, oh, I mean, eh. <laughs> And you know, I was just like, uh, okay, and so they actually kind of play Ninja for a little bit. Now, I don't really know what the game entails. I think it's probably like a version of Tag, because I think a few times I saw it in the anime, it's pretty much like a cardboard shuriken, and you kind of just toss it and tag someone. I think that's essentially what it is. So, do they still have the run-in with um, uh, Konkuro? Yeah, I think basically in this version, it just, uh, you know... Yeah, Konoramaru is kind of like the one that they're trying to attack, and he ends up bumping into Konkuro. Uh, it's like, Konkuro, uh, Konohamaru, are you okay? It's like, mm, yeah. <laughs> it's like, no. It's like, hey, that hurt you, little creep. It's like, put him down! It's like, Naruto, it's like, please put him down. It's like, yeah, you're annoying, all of you. Uh, you know, when a kid starts shooting his mouth like this, I just want to break him in half. 
And, you know, Naruto's, you know, is like about to charge in. And he now I can see this. And he's like, Naruto. And she grabs him. He's like, wait. And then, Byakugan. And, then, and she basically just charges up her Byakugan. Just, hmm. It's like, if you don't do it, if you don't do this, we'll have to report you for attacking a vill or attacking a villager uh, outside your own village. And Hinata, I see, Hinata, I think, would be smart, because Hinata wants to avoid a confrontation if possible. But she's still putting on the air of intimidation a little bit. Like, so she'll put on her Byakugan just to put a little bit of air of intimidation, I think. Um, and, this, and to show that she's not just a pushover. But also the fact that, yeah, I, I always point this out. It, it always bugs me how dumb Conqueror really was in the early version of the series. But yeah, Conqueror, what the hell are you doing? You you walk into someone's village, you attack a little kid just because he bumped into you? What the is your problem? That's how you start a war. Especially because it's the Hokage's grandson. Um, and, uh, and you know, and this uh, does cause, and, and, Tim, and Tamari actually does make a good point. He stops and he's like, she's got a good point, Conqueror. You We are guests in this village. You don't want to start something you can't finish. It's like, uh, and he actually just... Uh, Fine, and he, and, he does, and he just throws Konohamaru just back on the nose, like, Konohamaru, and then she goes right up to him, and he goes, are you okay? He's like, yeah, you got lucky this time, pug. Like, there's no luck about it, uh, ta raccoon boy, because he kind of looks like a raccoon. He's like, what'd you call me? He's like, you heard me, unless you, unless you, all that makeup cl uh, is clouding your hair, unless you put makeup in your ears, too. And so, you know, basically making his, he's got so much makeup, you can't even hear him. Um, or, you know, unless you can't hear me with that raccoon, uh, uh, uh hood over your head. Why, you little, and then he just pulls out, he even pulls out the crow, not even going with the chakra string. He's like, you want to dance, kid? And then all of a sudden, Sasuke goes, ah, son of a, you mother. He's like, you better get out of here right now. You're all, bar dogs like you are the worst. All bark, no bite. And he's like, you, uh, I had no problem taking both of you guys on. And obviously you get that. Conqueror, that's enough. Uh, you're an embarrassment to our village. And Sasuke's like, what? What? Uh, Garsh, uh, you know, throws that and comes down. I apologize for my brother's actions. Oh, God, God I was just a shut up before I kill you. Uh, <laughs> I'm getting, uh, who, and then Sasuke, is like, who are you? I'm Gar of the Desert. I'm curious to know what your name is, too. Sasuke Uchiha. You want to know my name? I couldn't care in the least. So there you go. Sounds obviously watching them. And then you get, obviously, the introduction to the tuning exams. So they all have their basic intros, uh, or their tests from Ryuruka. Naruto and Sasuke stay the same. Hinata would probably be a variation on Sakura's. It would just be with Naruto instead of uh, Sasuke. Uh, and it would be it would probably be a lot more psychological for Hinata because it already has confidence issues, confidence issues. But because she knows Naruto well enough, it pro like Naruto, it wouldn't trick her at all. Uh, well, it might, it, once Naruto starts saying certain things, she'd probably catch on and eventually, like, break the Genjutsu and all that. Uh, so, really, we go towards the tuning exams. Now, at the tuning exams, you got the first level, which is the trick door thing. Sasuke pretty much says, you know, yeah, put down, you know, take down that uh, uh, stupid Genjutsu. Oh, yeah? Uh, so you saw through it. We're not letting you through your regardless. And obviously, then you have uh, Neji... <laughs> it's coming up. It's like, what's your name? Uh, oh, wait. No, you. I know who you are. You're Sasuke Uchiha, aren't you? Uh, that's <clears throat> uh, that's a good guess. How would you know? Uh, it's pretty... Uh, I already... Of course I would know of my cousins. Uh, and cousins, cousins' teammates. Wait, cousins' team, And then Naruto... They, Naruto and Sasuke realize that it is... Wait, he's a Hyuga. It's like, wait, Hinata, he's your cousin? Uh, yes. It's like... He, oh, Lady Hinata, you shouldn't even be here. You're just going to drag your team down. Uh, it's like, what, what'd you say? And even Sasuke gets a little offense. Like, look, he, he's not like buddy buddy with Hinata, but he actually can legitimately call Hinata a valuable teammate and maybe even something of a friend. It's like, that ain't cool. And then, you know, she's just. She's uh, she's supposed to be the heiress, but she's no more. She's no stronger than a, than a lower clansman. You you'd be best to just ditch her while you can. And then you know, I was just kind of just sulking and like, "Well, you son of a!" And then even Sasuke actually stops and like, "Let's save it later, Naruto." And like, but what what are you talking about? And Sasuke, when Naruto's like, "What are you talking about, Sasuke? You can't let him talk. We can't let him talk to Hinata. You know, you know, we know how good Hinata is. Now, yeah, she can feel Sasuke kind of." 
you know, squeezing his hands. Like, what? And then he can actually see a little bit of pit. Sasuke's a little pissed off at him. So it's like, like I said, well, te- we can deal with them later. And even Arch was like, oh, yeah, we're dealing with them later. Uh, it's like one of the few times him and Naruto are really on the same page as they walk down the hallway. It's like, man, what's his deal with you? And then he you know, it does give a little bit of the story behind it. And as far as you know, the whole kidnapping and, <clears throat> you know, how the, the little, the, the amount she knows and the amount she's allowed to tell, which I have to imagine is quite frankly enough. Uh, and even Sas- Sasuke and Naruto hear this and they're like, but that's not your fault. It's like, what is it? Is it? Yeah. Destiny. I mean, there, there's only, I mean, whether destiny exists or not, but that is one thing, but that wasn't your fault. It, it, it was completely, it was the, it was the cloud village's fault for sending the guy to kidnap you. And then your, his dad made his choice. That, none of this is on you. He shouldn't, he hates the, even if he hates the main branch, he's, he shouldn't take it out on you. And even saw say, yeah, we never had that one uh, back in the, back in my clan, but, yeah, it sounds like your uh, family's a bunch of assholes. It's like, yeah, yeah. And then, obviously, you get the Rock Lee facing off, wanting to challenge Sasuke. Naruto gets his butt kicked. Kanata goes to tend to him. Sasuke gets his butt nearly kicked. Guy comes in, punches Lee. And that's where we're going to end it off right now, with them going into the exams. Now we'll meet other members, you know, Team you know, Shikamaru, you know, Sakura. We're going to see what they've been up to. Team 10's really not changed that much. Team eight. Let's uh we'll see what's up going up with them later on. We don't get a lot of team eight next episode, but we'll get a little bit. We'll get an intro. Uh really what we're gonna be learning more about with Sakura is obviously gonna be in the um <clears throat> the tournament arc, the preliminary matches. But until then, that's where we're leaving off. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. As always, you want us to review something, put in the comments below. Let us know, we'll do a review of it at some point. Nine days for who win Star Wars Super Magic. What if anything new on the channel, put that in the comments below as well. We'll get that at some points. Thanks for watching. See you next time.